It was quite a crazy first week in the world of college football. We saw top teams, ranked teams go down. We did not expect so early. We obviously seen a program that might be making a lot of noise all summer long, all year long. You know what team is. Coach Prime, good stuff there. And we just saw this very deep class, that this future draft class show why they are so deep with very impressive games throughout the entire college football week one. And we are here to take you through it. This is Matt Brown here from the Productive Conversations podcast. It is just me today doing this college football show. Um, Unfortunately, our team could not come through when we needed it, except um, the good boy Alex Ranelio shouts to him, though he had a last minute work obligation, and that's fine. All I know is that, you know, this is show 259. We're going to keep grinding and grinding so that one day we can get paid for this. That one day as we grow this amazing audience known as the Productive Nation, that we can give opportunities to people who are worthy and people who don't have to work really late hours to put out content amongst the career they're trying to pursue right now. And I get it. So it's no hard feelings at all. We just have to do what we have to do sometimes. And I appreciate the challenge. And I didn't expect to do a solo show in the college football season. This is my first year covering college football, but you know what? Did my homework. I watched the games and I'm ready to give you what I can. And it's going to be nothing but pure entertainment. And we're going to entertain, inform, and inspire you. And so let us do it. So the first thing we will get into here in our college football show today is obviously the big story that everybody was talking about where the Colorado Buffaloes took on the TCU Horn Frogs last year. TCU was in the national championship game. It was not pretty. And I'm sure a lot of people who are TCU fans don't want to remember it. And then you want to start fresh in front of your home fans. You're ready to start a new year. And you just so happen to run into a program that is on the way to really revamp and change themselves. And it is head by arguably the most popular college football coach in the land right now, Deion Sanders. After turning around Jackson State, his next goal is to turn around the University of Colorado, bringing in a lot of players and a lot of transfers in the transfer portal to replace who was on the team last year. And a lot of people doubting them, a lot of people saying Colorado ain't going to be anything, giving them an over under at just three and a half. And Coach Prime saw it. Coach Prime read the reviews. Coach Prime re- kept receipts. And you know what? We got nothing but a juggernaut football game on Saturday afternoon, high noon. And Colorado defeats TCU by a score of 45 to 42. Insane offense throughout. And obviously the two big players that made some noise here for Colorado and have become big names in the nation is Shadur Sanders, the quarterback, and Travis Hunter, the wide receiver and defensive back. Shadur Sanders, 38 for 47, 510 yards and four touchdowns. And Travis Hunter playing on both sides of the ball. And he gives you this on offense. He goes... 11 catches, 119 yards. And then on defense, Travis Hunter. Let's look at the the numbers on defense. Three total tackles and a deflection. And he had an interception in this game. So look at that. Shadur Sanders goes crazy as the quarterback on offense. And Travis Hunter goes crazy on both offense and defense. And I'd watch the game back and forth, no huddle offenses, very fast pace. And we couldn't believe what we were watching. You just had a good feeling coming into this game. Colorado was 20 point underdogs and they beat TCU by three points. Sure, their defense allowed 42 points. And I'm sure Coach Prime knows that that is an issue, but it could be solved. And you know what? Colorado made a statement especially when so many people, especially experts, really believe that this team may be fun to watch, but can they really win games? They start off the bat beating the national champion runner-up. 
That's something. Coach Prime's amazing speeches, pregame and postgame, pregame, midgame, and postgame. And, you know, it, whether you're a Dion fan and really admire the guy's confidence, or you think he's cocky and you're turned off by him and you think he's arrogant, but the bottom line is on that Saturday afternoon, he proved why he's special. And he really has a great chance to turn this program around. And I know it's just week one and there's plenty of overreactions during this week, but just seeing how explosive on offense this team really is, you possibly have maybe not just one, but two Heisman candidates in here. And for a team that is about to leave the Pac-12 and go back to the big, the Pac-12 and now go to the uh, big 12, it is pretty impressive. Travis Hunter, Shadur Sanders, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And when we go, we'll see when they play Nebraska this this Saturday at home. And you know the people of Colorado are going nuts there on that campus in Boulder. Some pretty good stuff. Very entertaining. And wow. All I can say, what an impressive debut to the Power 5 conferences, to the Power 5 schools for Deion Sanders. Coach Prime giving you something to talk about. We love it. We will see them next week against Nebraska. And for us, for TCU, uh, tough break there. You know, uh, Chandler Morris, you know, only going 24 for 42, throwing a couple of picks. That's not going to help. Emmanuel Bailey put in some work on the rushing game. Um, the receivers, none of them passing over 100 yards receiving and, um, obviously their defense could not handle Hunter and Sanders and yeah, it was, a uh, something else, but that was one fun game to watch too bad for the Horn Frogs, but shouts to the Buffaloes. It's very entertaining stuff throughout good stuff from Colorado there. Another game that really had a lot of people talking about and had a lot of other people, uh, turning heads. And let me just get the notes right here to tell you what happened. But why don't we talk about on Sunday, Sunday night, we saw number five ranked LSU take on number eight, Florida State University. And Florida State gave quite the ass whooping to the Tigers of LSU Florida State has had quite a difficult 10 years, you know, dealing with uh, bad PR and all of that. But as they have improved and as they got to be ranked eighth in the nation coming into this game and then playing LSU, a lot of people see them as a team who should be playing in the college football playoff. Florida State just went in and showed that we are going to start a new era here in Seminole country. And then look at this. They went 45, 24. You have five touchdowns from Jordan Travis alone, the quarterback 346 yards. Uh, sorry, no 342 yards. Guy can run. The guy can pass and quite a good amount of weapons as well. Right here. As I'm seeing. That was something else, and LSU could not keep up whatsoever. And uh, especially for the weapons here, whether Keon Coleman, nine receptions, 122 yards, Johnny Wilson, seven receptions, 104 yards, and Jaden Daniels, who people expect he could be a Heisman candidate. He played fine, and in fact, he played pretty well, but it was the uh, LSU Tigers defense that was – not stepping up when they needed to. So Florida State Seminoles, people really excited. Could they be playing in there? Could they be going back to the college football playoffs since Jameis Winston? You know, ever since he left in that very abysmal game against Oregon in the Rose Bowl, Florida State hasn't been the same, but now that they are back to prominence and getting a huge win off LSU and LSU can't afford to lose another game or they are going to be playing <laughs> not in the college football. Could enjoy the, the Peach Bowl or whatever. But uh, Florida State really making a statement in this game 
on a Sunday night. So good stuff from them on the uh, seminal side. So other things we could get into here. Jalen Milrow, who is the quarterback of Alabama, and it seems who is ever recruiting these players for the Crimson Tide, they really know where to find, you know, the next big thing. People, Jalen Milrow, uh, Jalen Milrow, they said, he, is he the next Jalen Hurts? Another guy who has a great arm, an accurate arm, and who can run the ball and um, make some noise and play under pressure. We'll have to see, you know, as I'm pulling up the score for the Crimson Tide. Just one moment, please. You no. Know, all right, we have it right here. You're going up against Middle Tennessee State. Not exactly much of a threat for the fourth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. But Jalen Milrow, until uh, he got out as they were, you know, just destroying this FCS team, he really showed that uh, this guy wasn't under pressure. 13 for 18, 194 yards and three touchdowns. Also rushing at seven carries and 48 yards. This guy might be pretty legit. I'm going to say he's fun. I'm going to say he's uh, diligent and knows how to break those tackles. And even like I said, to start off the season in front of a packed house down in Tuscaloosa, he had a great statement game to start his tenure as a starting quarterback for Bama. You know, now they're going up against a very tough matchup in Texas at home Saturday night, 9th. And we'll see if he's ready to take on the Texas defense and go up against a future SEC school. But I want to say Jalen Milrow, watch out for him because he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Good stuff from him right there. All right, what do we have next for you all? Just one moment. Best player in the nation, Caleb Williams who people feel that he might actually be the he might actually get a second Heisman trophy. Let me just look up really quick. Are there multiple I don't believe there have been multiple Heisman winners. Let's do it. Let's do it on Google really quick. Only one player has won the Heisman trophy twice and that was Ohio State's Archie Griffin. Oh, wow. Look at that from Google. When did Archie Griffin play? Okay, he wins and he won the Heisman twice in 1974 and 1975. He played a he had a solid NFL career. I wasn't too familiar with that with him, but um you know, lasted for the Bengals for a bunch of years, but the bottom line here though is uh, at Ohio State was the first ever multi-time Heisman Trophy winner. But could somebody join his company in Caleb Williams? Well, going up against Nevada, they scored 66 points on them and only uh, gave up 14. So they win 66 to 14. Caleb Williams, 319 yards, five touchdowns. <laughs> Pretty good stuff right there. And... I mean, what else can we say about Caleb Williams? He's a star. He's a fun to watch. He, you know, we'll see if he wants to, you know, go him. If he really wants to play for the Arizona Cardinals next year or, or stay. But um, I'm pretty sure he will. Uh, he has another year of eligibility next year. But um, we'll ultimately see where he goes. But Caleb Williams is making some noise for his first game of the 2023 season. And who is the tro who are the Trojans going to play this week and they're going against Stanford. I'm sure Stanford really would like to make some strides there against the uh, number 6 ranked team in the country. But um USC going up against uh some very exciting people and we'll see if USC can make a push for the college football playoff. Number 1 ranked Georgia wins 48 to 7. Again, 
no surprise there playing a much worse team. But Carson Beck in his uh, first game as the starter for quarterback, 21 of 31, 294 yards and one touchdown. Um, Good stuff for the Georgia Bulldogs there. So where else can we take our direction here in this podcast? Oh, I got one. Just one moment. Again, multitasking here. Just doing the show by myself, but no problem. We love the challenge, don't we? And another quarterback to uh, watch out for. And somebody who was put on my radar recently is Michael Pennick of Washington. And uh, look at what, look at the numbers he put up this weekend. Against Boise State. They won 56 and 19. Michael Pennick Jr., five touchdowns, 450 yards. I mean, insane. Absolutely insane what uh, these future Heisman Trophy winners, uh, sorry, future Heisman Trophy candidates played this past weekend. And people said this is a very deep quarterback class. Heck, if you don't win this year in the NFL, it's not so bad because you might have your next franchise quarterback there. There has to be at least three or for even four quarterbacks in this draft class that might actually, you know, again, be that franchise quarterback and save a franchise. But um, it is what it is there. But Michael Pennick Jr., again, maybe another team that makes a push to get to be the uh, last seed in the college football playoff in Washington, the Huskies, I believe. And, yeah, they they put on some noise. But why don't we also talk about the teams that fell short, the ranked teams that uh, did not live up to par for week one. So let me uh, go in a particular order on this one. Boston College lost. All right, one second. Have it right here. All right, let's look at let's look at these these uh teams that really underachieved. As we talked about with LSU being a f- ranked 5th in the nation and losing, that is not where to, that is not a good start for them. The Tigers not looking good in that game at all, especially on defense. We had Boston College lose to Northern Illinois. Man, I just love these stories when you hear about programs that spend so much money, or I should say get paid so much money to play a much superior team, whether they want it, want it as practice or they want to just embarrass another team in front of all the uh, spectators and uh, Board of Ed and, and the uh, charters and all of that. And then you're telling me that uh, Northern Illinois said no. We're not taking this. We're not getting embarrassed. We're going to play hard-nosed football, and we are going to prove you wrong. And guess what? The Boston College, they're the Eagles. We're not ready to play in a very tightly played game, and Northern Illinois wins 27-24. to 24. Oh, man. Boston College, not pretty. Not pretty at all. And what else do we see? Florida losing to Utah. Now, Utah's ranked, but Florida, they thought, might be uh, still a good team, might be able to get ranked as the season goes on, but losing to Utah, that's not going to help. Baylor going down against North Texas. Ooh, not pretty. Not pretty at all. But the big, but another big game that is just as big as LSU, but, uh, Gets its own segment on itself is the Clemson Tigers, who not too long ago were national champions. Trevor Lawrence, Dabo Sweeney leading the charge, and uh, they lose to the Duke Blue Devils by a score of 27 to 28 to 7. My, my, have the mighty have fallen. Oh, uh, Clemson. You know, me and Alex were talking about how, you know, Maybe maybe Clemson is on the decline. Maybe it's time for some revamping, if you will. And you know what? 
going into the first half where it was just seven, six Clemson. And then we have Riley Rett- Leonard running like he's Barry Sanders out there. Um, They make the, they make their noise. I mean, the touch, the quarterback didn't even score a touchdown. He didn't throw a touchdown for Duke. It was all about the running game and the defense and Clemson was not ready to play. I mean, they weren't home, but what kind of excuse is that? Too bad. Clemson goes down and their chance of making it to the college football playoffs are probably done. Unless they absolutely destroy all the ACC teams they're going to play for the rest of the year. Clemson is out of here. It is what it is. College football is a tough game. Whoever wants to be the top of the nation, you have to you know, first beat what the other 60 power five schools and then all the hundreds of D1 programs and stuff like that. It's uh everything has to move right, but it's entertaining, it brings everyone together. And even though we had some shocks, if you will, ultimately we see Clemson being the team to uh also fall and trying to get some hope for next year but we'll see it's still early um but clemson has a lot of they but clemson has a lot to make up for but um if dabo sweeney really is one of the great college football coaches of all time i'm sure he will take this lesson and make sure he pushes it and not fall from it so why don't we make some picks for the week? Why don't we focus specifically on the top 25 schools, the ranked schools, and we'll make some picks there. And then we will wrap it up for today in our second college football show, my first solo show, and Jesus, the show started. Um, but again, I appreciate the challenge, and I'm sure we'll have somebody back with me next week. And um, especially Alex Renelio, whatever he's doing with uh, somewhere in in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania or something with a job. I don't know. But um, we will definitely see him next week. But Ball State in Georgia. Georgia is (laughs) – Georgia has a minus 42-point spread. I'm going to go with the Georgia Bulldogs, and I think they're going to hit the spread. I think that they're going to put a 50-burger on Ball State. Shouts to David Letterman. Ohio State versus Youngston State. We don't have a spread open yet, but I know that obviously Ohio State's going to win this. Let's say the spread is at 30, minus 30, maybe even more. They're going to win. Destroy Youngston. Penn State versus Delaware. High noon. Again, no spread at the moment, but I'm sure we will see the Nitty Lions take care of business at home. What's next? Notre Dame and NC State. This game might be actually a little closer, but um, still fairly should go to the Fighting Irish's way. Sam Hartman, who I say is my pick to win the Heisman this year. I think he's going to take care of business against North Carolina State that just slid by against UConn. There was a chance that they were actually about to lose to them, but um, even though they're going to be at home, I think Notre Dame is going to take care of them pretty easily. Utah versus Baylor after Baylor loses to North Texas. And uh, Notre Dame is just, by the way, the spread for Notre Dame and NC State is minus seven for Notre Dame, seven and a half, and Notre Dame's going to hit that. Utah and Baylor, I think Utah is going to uh, put on the noise, you know, jumping from 24th in the nation to 12. A lot of people have good faith in them. I think they're going to hit the spread at minus eight. Troy and Kansas State, give me Kansas State rank 15th in the nation and uh, they're going to put it they're going to embarrass Troy hit that spread again all right one game we're all excited for and I mentioned high noon Colorado believe this let's see where is the stadium exactly okay Folsom Stadium in Boulder, Colorado, playing against the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who they themselves had a tough loss in the first week. You know, Matt Rule taking over that program. Give me Colorado, the minus three, and they're going to win by a touchdown. They're going to hit that spread. Clemson at 25th in the nation, still ranked, but um, not looking good. I'm sure they are going to destroy Charleston Southern at home. Again, no spread at the moment. 
give me Clemson in a revenge game or avenging game, if you will. UNLV versus Michigan, number two Michigan against UNLV. Michigan minus 36 and a half. Let's say they'll win, but they'll come short of the spread. Let's go with the Wolverines there, though. Ole Miss and Tulane, Mississippi opening at minus seven and a half. 20th ranked Mississippi, Tulane is a 24. A lot of people like Tulane. I'm going to give, give me Tulane on this one. They're going to get the upset on this. Texas A&M and Miami going to the U for this. 23 ranks Texas A&M. Give me Texas A&M with the points at minus four. Then Tulsa and Washington. Washington minus 34. I think they were going to have another great Michael Penick Jr. game destroying this defense of Tulsa. Give me Washington. Austin Perry at Tennessee, 5 o'clock. Again, no spread. Give Tennessee. North Carolina and Appalachian State. Appalachian State did uh, put in a good game, I saw. And um, they played Gardner Weber, Gardner Webb, uh, putting 45 points against their defense. So I'll say that Appalachian State will I'll give North Carolina the win of the money line, line but give Appalachian State the uh, points. Like go with them as the underdogs, as eighteen point underdogs. SMU and Oklahoma. Oklahoma opening at minus fifteen and a half. Give me Oklahoma in the points. Duke and Lafayette. Duke is ranked at twenty one. Shouts to them, Daniel Jones. Give me the Blue Devils. And then Texas and Alabama, probably the most exciting game of the week. Alabama only opening at seven. Uh, give me Alabama. They're going to defeat Texas at home. They give me the points for Bama. Oregon and Texas Tech. Oregon 13th. Give me Oregon at six and a half. Bo Nix, another possible Heisman Trophy candidate or a first round draft pick in the NFL draft. LSU and Grambling. Sucks to be Grambling because the LSU wants to uh, make people forget about their week one loss. Give me the Tigers. No spread on that. Wisconsin and Washington State, give me the points of Wisconsin minus oh, minus six. Florida State and Southern Mississippi, Florida State is going to play, hell, uh, play a hell of a game, cover the 31 points as well. Then uh, UC Davis and Oregon State, give me Oregon State, no spread there. And USC and Stanford, Stanford though trying to get out of the Pac-12 or trying to move. But give me the Trojans and Caleb Williams going to put on a hell of a show. So that will wrap up our college football show today. And you know what? That was very good. I really liked it. And we'll even do some more research if I have to do be solo dolo again. But I'm pretty sure we'll have Alex Ranelio back with us next week. But regardless, I appreciate and love each every each and every single one of you. Tune in tomorrow as we do another tweet cap, and we have some stories to talk about. So our non-football show of the week um, from the cop getting it on with some woman while on duty. Uh, this divorce lawyer is going viral, James Sexton. We'll have the married Ryan and the not married me and Jose talk about this advice is valid or not. Um, Barstool's pizza review getting nuts. I, it is the story's about a week old, but. Maybe we'll still talk about it. Tucker Carlson bringing on a crackhead who allegedly had sexual relations with former President Barack Obama. The fact that I have to say that is nuts, but we will definitely get into that on the tweet cap next week. But like I said, tune in tomorrow on all podcasts and platforms and YouTube, and we will do our tweet cap show and uh, just talk about all the crazy stuff happening in the world of the internet. And then we'll be back next week. Wednesday, our NFL going through week one, week two, going through week two in the car co- so what sorry let me restart on wednesday we have the nfl show next wednesday we'll go through week one thursday we'll go through week two of college football and then again friday with another tweet cap but good stuff ahead we'll see you tomorrow with the tweet cap we'll see you next week to uh, cover college football week two and uh yeah check us out and we appreciate every single one of you i want to thank alex de jesus behind the scenes for what he does And I want to thank you, the greatest fans and listeners in the world, for always tuning in. My name is Matt Brown. I am the host of the Productive Conversations podcast, and I will see you very soon. Much love, everybody. Peace.